begin with Sketchbook Pro um, line art that I created in this program which you can uh, download online um, here after you create your initial line art I, I go back and create some simple layers uh, this one we'll call uh, black layer and and this will just set the foundation um, and you can see here kind of going and selecting my colors that's uh, changes the brushes size here you have opacity sizes um, it's a it's a really great uh, program that just lets you put things down uh, real quick um, also you want to be uh, having your lines on the top layer and then adding adding your color on the underneath it so you just saw your lines kind of show through so here I just start off by putting on some like a, a mid-tone uh, black color kind of like a 50 percent gray uh, later on we'll, we'll darken that in, in Photoshop uh, this just gives you kind of like a, a quick foundation and uh, just real simple to to see if you do it too black you start to lose your lines uh, early on so um, this is pretty much a, a real basic uh, quick quick process there's other ways to do it I'm, I'm showing you the way I kind of do a fast a fast sketch something to just to get you know for a presentation or or something like that just doing it real quick um, so here's changing my brush size gonna add some shadows and just building up the layering giving it some some dimension and the great thing with sketching in in this program sketchbook pro 2 the line weight and, and using the Cintiq, the pressure sensitivity of this uh, drawing tablet, it really gives you um, great line weight where in Photoshop one of the things they're still hopefully working on on their next release is going to be uh, you know when you depress the pencil, the, the pen tool, you just get a nice thin to thick line and, and you don't get this kind of like blotching of, of a color, like a hard color right away. So just keep keep building up your layers slowly. Play around with the, the size of the brush. It's really, you know, right now I'm just kind of hitting where the the stitch line occurs. And what this does is kind of when, whenever you create a stitch in, in your material, it kind of get, leaves like a little depression. And you want to try to capture the the shadow and the and the highlight of that kind of creasing effect. With my style, I kind of I kind of bounce around from from one side to the other. Um, you, you know, sometimes I kind of see something I want to I want to hit. There's no formula for working from the the front of the shoe to the back. It's just kind of kind of random. But um, again, just kind of the the way I I work to create a quick a quick design here. So now I go and kind of feel comfortable with the the shadows that I would place down I'll, I'll create a highlights layer and pretty much do the same that I did with the shadows but when I add the white on top of this layer um, what's what's good is you can kinda go back and erase the areas that that you might have uh, you know you don't want to commit to so by creating creating layers you just give you, you kinda give yourself that uh, little room to little room to breathe just in case you're not happy with something you can kind of just delete this layer and just start start over again and again this outrigger here is kind of on the lateral side it kind of gives you like you want that rubber part to kind of flare out you're just trying to get a lot of light hitting down on that So basically my tools, I work with Sketchbook Pro, Illustrator, and Photoshop 
as, as my three key programs and I kind of cross over from, and bounce around a lot from from those those programs here I'm going around and, and erasing some of the whites that that may have extended over certain shapes I want to kind of create like some hard edge hard edge lines and then after you're kind of set with your your overall shape you kind of go in and just use the eraser tool and slowly on that black layer just kind of start erasing um, the areas that, that you don't want And the interface with Sketchbook Pro is, is really cool. It's really fast. You, you can set <clears throat> on your synth or on your keyboard some just quick uh, hot keys to, to kind of have these uh, toolbars appear and disappear really quick and, and at your fingertips. This lets the process go real, real fast. So I just keep erasing these areas. You can always go back in and add, in, in case you messed up or something, you can go back and add in more color, uh, fix something that you think you're not happy with. Sketchbook doesn't give you any, any sort of paths path tools that you kind of find in, in Illustrator and Photoshop. It's more of just a basic sketching program and it's more for real loose um, loose type sketches. Later on in another video I'll show you how to, how to create you know a, a shoe in perspective with more precision in Photoshop and, and really creating paths and, and shapes and then kind of rendering within shapes and um, you can you know each program has it, its advantages and disadvantages but um, this is great for just real quick uh, quick stuff, quick sketches we're almost finished with our first layer which we're calling our black layer, so this bottom synthetic piece. Later on, we'll uh, we'll make this a little more reflective. It looks a little dull right now, but um, you'll see later on how to kind of tweak that. <clears throat> And right now we're just only affecting that black layer of color. All our lines are kept intact on that for, on that top layer, so we'll always have that to go go back to. And then right here, I'm just going to hit a few more little areas to really kind of punch them, get some depth, get some depth going. Just a couple key points before we before we move on to our next layer. Going to our highlights layer, adding a little more precise lines just to show the kind of creasing the material and the different materials, the rubber outsole kind of meeting up with the with that synthetic piece. <clears throat> So here we'll create a red layer, and this is basically a, like a plastic uh, radio frequency weld that uh, is more like a TPU material, kind of like these ribs, give the shoe a little bit of structure. And the same formula pretty much, we'll bring this below the black layer so you, you, don't, you can just kind of hide what's going on under the black. So the red that you kind of overspray underneath it won't even show up, and you'll get that nice edge along that black layer. 
And here you kind of want to be a little consistent with, with the color, less erasing you have to do. If you kind of try to stay within the lines as, as best you can, just minimize the amount of erasing that you, have, that you need to do later on. But kind of, you know, pick a nice juicy red color, uh, bold, then block all this in, blocking in the lining here. Collar lining, and kind of showing like the lace webbings. There we go. All right, now we'll change the color, a little bit of a deeper color. We'll use the airbrush and start showing some of the shadows. And here again, I create another layer with just, we'll call it shadows. Um, and then later on, we can drop that down and merge with merge with this red layer. So we start just showing kind of like the angularity of this of this part, like these ribs are intended to kind of have like a little spinal uh, crease down the center of it. So just right now shading on the parts away from the light source. And our light source for the most part it's it's kind of coming straight down uh, maybe a little bit towards the the front of the shoe over here where my brush is right now yeah and again I'm over spraying you know knowing that I'm gonna go back in and, and erase everything that I don't want just kinda give this this lining a little bit of of curvature and definition as that lining kind of rolls under. I just like to, you know, kind of build real slow and start defining defining my shapes and forms. So here now I'll start adding some highlights. I'll go up to my highlights layer that I did for the black layer. And I'll just I'll just do it on the same one. Oh, first uh, first, let's begin with erasing some of the shadows that we don't want. That kind of oversprayed onto where the where I'm going to place my highlights. Now just just erasing some of the overflow shadow areas. Here I'll just go ahead and make a white layer, and these will be the highlights for the the red component. That's there we go. Kind of start to see how these shapes start to give that that dimension, that kind of like creased uh, center that kind of sticks up. What you're not seeing right now is the Cintiq tablets. Basically, the old technology was the Wacom drawing tablets, where you kind of had had to work on your um, technique, your eye coordination, where you're kind of looking up at the screen and and sketching on the on the side on like a flat surface. And and now uh, there's a new new technology where you just the the screen presents your 
your video right up on the screen of, of what you're looking at and you can just wherever you press the the pen that's kind of where your cursor goes to and aligns with it just made things a little a little easier to um, um, just it's just more precise and less uh, less er editing your work making sure you kind of throw down that right line and here just erasing some of the excess excess areas if you make a mistake just hit the undo button down there at the bottom See here, we're almost done. Just a few more little, few more passes here. And here are our laces. We're gonna <clears throat> kind of take out the erase kind of where these laces actually go, and that lining kind of runs underneath. finish up here so pretty much we're done with the red layer for now there we go a couple of that last little last little tweaks So now we'll we'll start off our the majority of this sh the supper here has like a, a leather c component to it and basically want to just start adding some of the shadows the shadows to this white part and by placing this layer all the way to the bottom we can just run that um, this almost like a let's say like a thirty percent gray with our airbrush you can kind of do your brush stroke and and everything kind of hides underneath the the layers that we created above for example the red and the black layer so you don't have to go back and erase as much you just fill that all in and it never shows itself through so here just adding kind of where that toe foreshortens and, and kind of it's a little bit extra room there get a little bit darker uh, we'll throw in kind of like a little ankle ankle bulge, indicate some sort of like curvature and possible padding on the inside, inside of the shoe for for protection and, and comfort. Here I'm kind of just going to where the laces are and just adding a little bit more some definition there. Since the laces are kind of offset from that that tongue mesh, you kind of want to show as that lace curves curves around, you get kind of get a darker a darker area.
So pretty much for these three layers, you kind of it's the same process, just different colors and and different degrees of of brightness, contrast. You kind of have that black layer. It's a little less um, for right now. It's it's a little less uh, contrasty and more muted. The red starts to carry more of a plasticky with hard hard uh, highlight um, hits a little darker shadows and then the white just more of a softer um, kind of material so you kind of want to have a little softer um, effect with the shadows So here we just continue to define the the shadows under the kind of the red the red plastic fingers and get get them to kind of punch out a little bit more. So I'm just adding some sh some shading under those forms. It's hard to see the cursor, but if you, you kind of look closely you can kind of see it moving around so now select the eraser tool and this is the again the hard eraser tool and that'll just erase some of the some of the effects that you don't want to to be, to be visible And then you can see it just increase the opacity up to 100% here. And just get rid of all my all my white layers. Get rid of the shadows that kind of bled over onto the background. Kind of go above these laces here. So we're almost finished with this white layer and the nitty gritty stuff is kind of over with now. Thanks for bearing with me. But we'll start to get into some of the, the cooler effects shortly. But these are kind of your your building, you know, you're kind of building these layers and you just need to, need to start off with a good, good basic foundation. So here I'll just create a new layer called Reflection and we'll start to add a little bit darker effect to this, this, this black area here. And again, just by doing that new layer, you just allow yourself um, a little bit of leeway. Like if you, if you hit something the wrong way or you kind of make a mistake, you think you just did it and you're just not happy with, with the results that you just made. You know, it's just easy. You kind of wasted a little bit of time, but you know, you don't have to sacrifice all that work that you just previously did. You can just go erase this this layer and and start from this layer from scratch. So I just start adding some bold <clears throat> bold black lines. You changing between the airbrush kind of getting this like black area to kind of like curve around. I want to define like this hard reflective um, like horizon line, that center line. And as that kind of cur the curve follows the this uh, synthetic material, now you just kind of take this eraser, a hard edge eraser, and, and give that top edge of that reflection a nice hard, hard line. And then just you know, as that material wraps wraps over, you kind of give it give it nice de definition. I'm jacked all the way to 100% on my amount erased. 
which just gets rid of all all the black that I don't want. And with these layers too, what we'll show you, you can uh, change the layer opacity pretty easily so that some things shine through. So this black piece, I just want this to really, you know, here's the opacity. I'll just kind of take that down a little bit because I want to kind of get confused as far as where that, that line originally ends up. So by getting rid of the opacity, it just lets me see where that original line is. And I can kind of erase and I'll go back and, and turn that opacity back up to 100%. This is the soft eraser now, so I kind of want to reduce some of the darkness from below, get that crease line, the visual of that reflection really hard, and, and then blend and, and soften the, the black below. And right now I'm still doing this in the opacity layer with it about 50%. What's nice about this eraser is it, it doesn't have hard edges, it kind of softens and, and feathers all around us. You can really do some nice blends. Here I'm just adding a couple little stylized, stylized lines, erase lines to it. And then still f finish off this, this strap as well. So just add a little bit of dark, a little more dark, kind of this, again, where the stitches are, that kind of curves and get kind of like a little reflection in there, up here in the front too, just want to hit that, you know, don't be afraid to move your page around and and these Cintiq tablets are cool, they, they kind of swivel and, and curve, so you can kind of get the natural curve of your arm making a, making a stroke. It's really, uh, really cool. So I I've, I've, haven't gone back to drawing on paper. I, I rarely, I'll, I'll do a doodle just to get a, an idea down on, on paper, but for the most part, I'm working 100% right, right on the computer these days. Actually, for the last uh, two years. So go back, do the same thing here for the strap that we just did on the on that synthetic, uh, that black synthetic piece. <clears throat> Again, we're still in that opacity layer where it's at fifty percent. You don't want to forget to to go back and, and turn that back to full and you got the stitch the stitch area right around here so we want to highlight and shadow that Just kind of adding a few more, a few more harder, darker lines. It's all about, you know, slowly building those layers, building those shadows, and building that depth. And just keep, keep progressing it and, and, and building on top of one layer at a time. And, I just do the same thing. I'm just going to keep going with my reflections and start adding some definition to the red uh, TPU part. 
I'll just keep this on the same reflection layer. Just give some like little dark hits here as it curves around. You really start to see these forms start getting a little, little more 3D. Every time I add a little more color, darker, and, and highlight on the other side, it just really starts giving you that, that full depth. Alright, so we'll go back to this reflection layer and, and move our highlights. Pull our highlights onto that black, create a new layer here. So on top of the reflection now, we want to create this, this hard white edge. And what I'm going to do is with my airbrush, I'm just going to go in and, and kind of, you know, get this airbrush all over the place and it's kind of going over my my nice crisp black lines but again I'm, I have that white reflection layer and kind of just give some you know pick pick a couple hot spots and and add, add a little bit of extra white there and just go get that hard eraser you want to have that nice hard crisp line and just start erasing and kind of get that nice real nice definition it starts to look plasticky. And then with the soft eraser just, just to kind of blend that that white area into the strap material a little better. We'll jack the reflection up. And now you can see the the depth and the, the richness of that black color kind of showing through. So now I've gone to my lines layer. And here I'm just starting to add a little bit of white, some white line definition. Because if, if I create white lines underneath my line art, then all the black lines from my original sketch kind of won't show through. So this is always better to if you have any white lines kind of have that all the way to the top layer therefore you kind of see you get to kind of see all those white lines which is kind of adding a little bit of a little bit of a pop right on that edge where the white meets the black kind of gives it a little bit more plasticky and, and shiny look just by hitting that giving that light source a little bit of a edge there Just do this throughout. And again, this all this all this work is done purely purely by hand. There's no um, no stencils, no rulers. You know, this is all freehand for the most part. And this just this is real quick, um, real fast for me. I can do renderings for for many hours, but in order to get kind of the idea and the concept across, this is the quickest way for me to for me to do it. Right now on the on the rubber, on that rubber material, kind of want to show like that high highlight, that top highlight edge. Just adding a little bit of white to that. And here you can kind of change the pencil size a little bit thicker. More white gets placed down. You also have a few more. You can set your undos to about 30 maximum in this program. And uh, in Photoshop, it's, it's a little trickier. You have one un undo, but you can go back into the... You can go back a few steps, but you kind of lose a lot of stuff if you do that. Just add a few more little white highlights here. 
So you use the eyedropper tool and just kind of pick, pick shadows of color, shades of color that you like. Now I'm just going to add some detail to these laces, just so almost like there's like a color edge. So it's not just a solid white lace, but you kind of have like a, a two-tone um, lace. Gives a little bit more of a realistic, realistic look. More of an athletic, athletic look to these uh, oval performance laces. And I'm just doing it with the colors I have here now, which is just the black and the red. So I just thought red would be a little too much. So I'll just go with more of like a a light, maybe like a, I got it at a 50% gray. And then here, just going to kind of, Zoom in a little bit. Kind of hit these, hit the edge of the edge of that. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to take a screenshot, which is a Shift Apple f f Control and f Number Four, all at the same time. Kind of brings up those crosshairs, and I'll open up Illustrator and paste this layer in the Illustrator, and you can see it has all my has everything that was in that window. Uh, I took a screenshot of that, so all my little window bar, uh, tab bars there, <laughs> black, red, white, the layer window, you can see all that. that uh, everything gets placed in here. And basically I'm going to create, I want to create this uh, perf pattern for the white synthetic. So here I'm going, I'm going to create a circle, and uh, we'll fill that with black, and make a box and the box should be have an outline and a fill of of nothing of transparent and then you'll take there we go we'll get rid of that so now we'll select that and we'll open up our oh let's um align this first so we know it's centered and then we'll take that and we'll drag that into our brushes we'll make that an art brush call it whatever you want we'll just leave it as the default <clears throat> Actually, hold on. Let me uh, put that here. So in our swatches window, sorry, we want to make this, uh, I'm going to fill this area with this pattern that I just created. So I'll go make a rectangle and we'll fill it with this swatch. You can see it indicated there in, in the color, all those color squares. Make sure you're on your fill and you press that button. Hold down, uh, press the S for scale. If you hold down your shift and the little uh, cursive uh, right under the escape button, if you hold that down and, and drag, you kind of change the degree of, of sizes of your of your shapes within this rectangle. And you can change, you can rotate. Um, there's a couple things, uh, cool things you can do. So here, after we do that, the one we like, we'll rasterize, transparent background and what this does is this will let us uh, take this envelope distort tool make with the mesh and create a couple uh, cross um, intersecting points and basically what I want to do is I want to take that ankle area and create kind of like a curved make these perfs look like they're curved so there you can see all the all the um, intersecting points and, and lines and I'm going to rotate these so they look a little more um, 
a little more natural. Hold on a second, just undo this. I want to take one of the, the top right intersecting points and put the center in the center of the of that round shadowed ankle part. So there I'm just gonna move this and align this a little better. There we go. So that's the point there. So now I want to take my selection tool, the white arrow, uh, arrow and click on that. So now I have that. I'll hit um, my scale. Maybe do about 100 and uh, let's see, about one, maybe 175 preview. And you kind of see, see how the how those perfs just distorted right there. It really makes this look like it's it's curved and, and it only blends I added you know four by four lines so that those shapes happen in a smaller zone <clears throat> now you can even pull these you know and the and the curve the those perfs will kind of curve you know you can you have a lot of stuff I'll go into that in in another in another video with, with uh, techniques little tricks and tricks and whatnot but for this you know pretty much have it we'll get rid of that background um, JPEG, get rid of that little little piece there, and then um, we'll save this as a. We'll save this and then bring this into um, into Photoshop. So we'll save that for later. So in Photoshop here, you kind of want to let's place that image, and we'll create a path. And basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to. I want to section off this white um, leather synthetic area and you know I'll click and drag the pen tool hold down my option key and that lets me kind of maneuver the end points if I want to kind of fine tune it a little bit but by creating these um, these shapes here this is a little bit more of a precise way to do it, especially in Photoshop with um, with this function. Uh, it's a little easier for me to do this than go back and erase. Um, one of the things, that the negative things about Sketchbook Pro is you're limited to to the layers and the opacities and, and things of that nature. And when you import a, a sketch or a, an image capture it basically whatever's white um, or whatever's transparent let's say you want something like this perf pattern I want kind of see through I just want to have those black perf holes to show through it'll fill everything as as white so you know that isn't really gonna work for me here so the, the best way to do it is to bring this into Photoshop which it does preserve the layers for you which is uh, new new thing in uh, in Photoshop um, of the Creative Suite bundle number three, and this by doing this it'll preserve those uh, transparencies that I that I want and only show those black those black perf holes and everything else all these all the white shading here on that white layer that I did that'll all <clears throat> all show through. So. As you can see, I can just keep creating these paths and then go and, and make sure I close off each one. Make sure you see that little circle that indicates that you're going to close off the path into one, one form. Um, these will all be on this one path layer. So here you'll see it again, the little circle out there it is. <clears throat> Alright, so this should be the last shape here. You know, click, drag. You kind of be strategic where you place the place those curves. You can always go back with the the white selection arrow tool and kind of move them around if you if you you know missed or, or didn't put it in the right spot or you just want to kind of fine-tune a little bit with more accuracy you can just always go back and and do that but 
I just try to get it done in one shot and be as, as accurate as possible on my first pass. Let's go around these lace holes. There we go. Oops. So just undo that and you can kind of see see here I kind of made a mistake and I'll just keep going and I'll go back and and I'll show you what I mean about uh, modifying some of the points that they might have made a mistake with. And this takes a little bit of practice, kind of like knowing where to kind of click down and, and how to drag that those curves. There we go. And so over here I'll go and kind of tweak that. So I got my selection tool and see there you go, you kind of drag that and move it around tweak it a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> so once you're satisfied with that and you're happy with the shape I zoom out here and Oh yeah, I forgot this one last uh, shape here. There we go. All right, so zoom out. All right. So now, if you go to, let's go over here. Your path tool. Go down to the bottom. The selection. Make. Oh, sorry. Make. Let's make a new layer first. <clears throat> and then selection. Now you can see all the little ants kind of highlighted. We'll do that new layer that we just created. We'll create a new layer for our perf pattern. <laughs> and then we'll place it. So we'll go to where our go place. Grab our perfs. There we are. And we'll place. All right. So there it is. So now you can kind of see all the red showing through. The transparency has been maintained, which is uh, if we brought this into Sketchbook you wouldn't see anything underneath that rectangular shape it all be filled with white so here we'll go in made a new layer called perfs and we're gonna copy and paste and we'll paste it into a new layer basically we are copying those perf shapes that are within those ants uh, moving ants marching ants and then we'll hide the perf layer and you kinda see what's left over just delete that layer since we don't need it anymore. It's a waste of data. Um, you're kind of left with that. We'll change the opacity. We won't. We don't want it too too loud and in your face. Just enough to be visible. We'll go down to zoom in. Go down to the effects uh, bevel and and curve here. And then you can kind of play around with all these special effects. It's Photoshop's really cool, and um, there's so many things you can do here that just add that extra realism to it so here you kind of see the little highlight it's being added to all these all these shapes here you can change the size and when you're happy with it you know just hit okay play around with multiply things like that Maybe just increase the opacity a little bit find the right the right area All right. So now we'll take the burn tool. We'll play around with our brush size. And the burning right now is just doing it. Since we're on the perf layer, it's just gonna kind of bring out, um, you know, mid tones, and you have the amount of exposure you want. But it really just just emphasizes the the mid-tone color on that layer and lets you kind of accentuate it 
without affecting anything else. All right, so let's move on and we'll come back to to that. We'll make a mesh layer, um, a mesh path, sorry. Now we'll basically do the same the same thing with the path tool. And wherever our tongue mesh is, we're going to just want to make a shape around those. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I've already created a, a mesh pattern in Illustrator. The same way I did these perfs that you saw a minute ago. So I, you know, I have an archive of, of a bunch of meshes and, and brushes and things of that nature. So I go back to those pretty frequently and, and uh, I'm always making up new ones. But I already have something saved. I'm just going to import that in here after I'm done with these. And you'll see. You'll see once you start mixing, you know, these perf patterns, uh, meshes, if you have, um, you know, carbon fiber patterns and, and textures, or you want something to look um, like a full grain leather, or just any kind of any kind of patterns or anything that you've, you, you've scanned in, um, you can take that, bring, you know, cr create these shapes that I'm that I'm showing you right now, create these shapes and and bring in those patterns and, and apply any kind of texture to any any pattern piece. You obviously want to make sure your you know the the material patterns you're bringing in uh, give it some sort of realism. Uh, there's no sense in bringing in a, a brick, uh, you know, a brick from your a house or some sort of architecture like that and trying to put it on a uh, a mesh you know it just doesn't make sense but there are a lot of uh, things online that you can kind of find and I'm always taking snapshots of cool cool patterns and details I always have a camera with me uh, you never know when you when you use that so here you know we've done the same thing we created the all the mesh we've isolated it go into our layers Let's um, go. Let's place this uh, this mesh here. Tongue mesh. There it is. <clears throat> so there's my mesh, and you can see the the holes are showing through. And I'm gonna want to position this. It, it scaled it a little bit um, differently than I had it in Illustrator. So I'm just gonna have to go and and uh, scale this down a little bit so there we go so now the marching ants copy it paste it into a new layer actually yeah let me uh, let me scale this down it's just not looking right go back and move this because what I'm trying to do is make this look like that mesh is curving around the top the top edge of the of the tongue form, the holes kind of get a little smaller. You can kind of see it. You kind of go from larger shapes to smaller ones on that edge. Just kind of move that in the right position. Go back to my paths, and then select that. Get those marching ants back to layers. Uh, copy, paste into a new layer. Just call that tongue and paste it, and then we'll kind of hide and delete the the rest of it. So there we have our a new mesh now isolated, and we can play around with multiply so we can get some of those shadows showing through. Play around with the opacity, and then we'll uh, get hit it with with some dodge and burning. And just to kind of give it, you know, burning will only burn those and and darken those um, the areas of that mesh without altering anything else on the on your artwork. Just like these little tricks on how to make this look 
a little bit more real. Can you see? It's gonna hit it with some dark. Dark burning. So let's make a, a new path here. And we're gonna, back here, you're probably wondering what this was. Um, this is just, you know, it's some sort of technology, um, almost like, say, like uh, a pressurized or uh, kind of bladder system or whatnot, some sort of cushioning element. And you kind of see right there in this on this end here, it's somewhat, you can kind of see some stuff going on inside, some structural parts and, basically want to highlight this area and make this look a little more plasticky so we'll kind of in Photoshop go back to our layers and we'll go to our, um, our background copy and then we'll select those hands so now anything I do is only going to happen in here so let's go with uh, dodging I'll use like a soft brush here and you kind of see see how it's not it's only doing stuff inside of those marching ants this is a great way to to, to get like this hard edge um, without having to go back and erase anything <laughs> see let's select it again activate it Go here and let's go to our brush tool and change it to white. Add some like highlights to it and go to like a soft, like a soft brush here. <clears throat> and there you go. You kind of see that I'm just catching that high highlight area, nice and crisp. Let's go back in, and you know you can do multiple paths and, and get crazy with paths. I'll, I'll do that in in in, in another uh, another video, showing you how how to get really intricate and and really go after more precision. But this again is more of just a loose style, um, more of an artistic flavor to it rather than photorealism. Just kind of catch that highlight there at the end. And just you know, there's different ways you can you can dodge, you can burn, you can add the color with a with a brush. Um, what's nice about dodging and burning is it just it preserves the lines that you have already in the artwork rather than covering over with you know if you're using like a brush and you're using a, a black color then it's just going to cover over your line work by using the dodge and burn it kind of preserves that line so if you're uh, dodging it, it'll just it'll kind of erase it a little bit but if you're burning it'll just make that black line a little blacker than whatever else you're adding and here just adding a couple little like highlight zones just giving kind of like a little little bit of a an element of uh, plastic feel and then just kind of giving trying to make this thing look a little more three dimensional kind of like it's tucking under this uh, foam midsole Showing kind of what that rib is doing on the inside. Just kind of zoom out, and, and there we go. And then just deselect. <clears throat> All right, so now we're back in Sketchbook Pro, and we have our perfs, we have our mesh, we have that reflective uh, heel piece, and let's add some. Let's continue, and I'm just gonna go. Uh, I could I could have done this in Photoshop. Let's go back and 
and kind of finish it off in in uh, sketchbook here we'll make a reflection layer and just kind of get some white and you know with the same techniques we'll use the eraser tool kind of slice through so this is kind of just trying to give that last um, you know if you take a picture of something you kind of get that glossiness um, from the camera flash that's kind of the intent right here you kind of build up your layers that, that I did in Photoshop just a second ago and then in here this is kind of like that that effect you get when you take a picture and that that light kind of reflects back at the camera and you see here you can undo a couple steps and then you just go back with the soft eraser tool kind of you know, put down a little too much too much bright white you kind of want to get rid of some of that you get that background back up to full see what we're doing and now we'll go into into the shadow and again we'll just pick some black and and throw down some black here and the nice thing about this is all that stuff we did in Photoshop it just starts to look like it's all underneath um, this like top top level that we're doing right now and you start to kind of hint at what's underneath zoom in here and just with the airbrush kind of just kind of pop that edge a little bit there we go and then right where that foam kind of curls under and becomes like a a spot for this plastic uh, technology to kind of sit in. You kind of want to create like a little bit of a shadow there and show that it has some like curvature to it. And kind of highlighting a little bit of that structure underneath. Just adding a little bit of black, see how the hard hard edge really kind of gets that popping off there. Just go back, real hit it hard, nice and nice and dark there. And just keep hitting those lines. And just really start to get that three-dimensional look to it. You kind of want to show a little bit of a plastic thickness. So I added that extra line there. As that plastic kind of curls around the to the other side, you kind of just get that, you know, about like a millimeter and a half or so thick wall of, of plastic. So kind of show through there. Just build up that outer edge. Just hit it with some black. And then the white, you could do the same thing. Just keep hitting. Keep it a little hot spot. foam needs a little bit of a white too. It doesn't look like it's quite right yet. There we go. Just a couple more little highlight effects.
Alright, so a little more details and we're almost done here. <clears throat> so pretty much here's this pretty much the gist of of the shoe rendering. There we go, just if you hold down shift in this program which I've set uh, to create a straight line. That's pretty pretty much the extent of my rulers in this in this program. Just hold down shift and and uh, use the pen and drag it and it'll create a nice straight line for you. All right, so here we go. We got this all all squared away. All right, so next step we're gonna go and take this into Photoshop and select the magic wand tool and select the background under here under the webbing and under the heel webbing and then we'll select the inverse so it just isolates the shoe itself we'll uh, we'll cut that out and we'll fill this layer with um, the background color just white and there we go and we'll go make a new layer and we'll paste the shoe that we just cut out, we'll paste that in here there we go we'll get rid of the get rid of, let's make a new layer for our, for our uh, gradient background and we'll get rid of the white one just don't need that anymore. We'll fill this layer in here with the background, which is white. And we'll go to the gradient tool. We'll select the black gradient and we'll just hold shift, drag, click and drag, and there you go. We have a gradient. You can go from bottom up, up top to bottom, change the color. So we'll just stick with the, the black to white and back to black. Create a new layer. And here we'll do shadows, and this will just because right now it just looks kind of artificial. So if we put a shadow down with our brush here, with black, we'll get, we'll select a thicker brush, fatter brush. Maybe, there we go. And we'll start making a little bit of a shadow. And I like to start with uh, you know a bigger spray, and then I'll change your brush size to a little smaller and I'm gonna hit it a little more and then I'll I'll hit it again. Right now we're about like a 50% opacity so you don't want it to be pure black you kinda of want to build it up a little bit and so there you go. So now a new layer and we'll do a reflection here so since I've already had you know, I'll paste it again. I'll paste that shoe that I already cut out. And we'll move it here just so you can see it. There it is. And we'll invert. We'll flip this over. And we'll drag it down. And this is how you do a reflection of this into the bottom here. And then we use our eraser tool with a nice feathered edge, a decent size about 50 percent on both of those there make it bigger it's too small there we go yeah, and just start erasing a little bit and depending on how much reflection you want I kinda wanna show the shoe off a little bit so make this a little more subtle it's there but it's not you know not interfering with the overall design and and uh, pretty much there you go and that's the that's the end of this demo